So I've had the NX Hybrid for almost a year now, and while my initial impressions were very positive, today I want to give my long-term review of the NX Hybrid to see how the experience has held up after 18,000 kilometers. I'll be revisiting the driving dynamics, the tech and infotainment, and also the overall luxury, comfort, and practicality to give you a more well-rounded idea of what it's like to own and live with this car. But first, I want to start off with something that I've never covered before, and that is the winter experience as an overarching topic, which has been a bit of a mixed bag for me. So let's jump right in. So starting with my winter setup, I downsized to 18-inch Braylon BR10 rims with Michelin X Ice tires. Now I didn't purchase an additional set of TPMS, so I do have a tire pressure alert in my dash. I know some people tape over it, but honestly, it doesn't bother me that much because it's not like it's blinking or anything. Now the ride quality is a little bit better, honestly not super noticeable, but the road noise is absolutely night and day. And I completely understand why most people say they hate run flats now. Um, to be fair, I did perceive the NX to be acceptably quiet, even with the run flats, but without the run flats, it just, it really elevates the luxury feeling with how quiet it is. Now in terms of driving in the snow, the NX is very competent. Um, obviously I had new winter tires and they're great winter tires, but even then coming from a front wheel drive Mazda 3, the roll clearance and the hybrid all wheel drive are big contributors to that feeling of confidence, especially when you're driving in deep snow, um, which is exactly what I was looking for when I, when I purchased this car. Now, as with any car, but especially hybrids, uh, you do take a hit in fuel economy in the winter. So in the summer, I was getting about 5.6 liters per 100. Um, now in the winter, so the running average after about 18,000 kilometers, I'm sitting at about 5.8 liters per 100 kilometer. It's been a relatively warm winter though, so I, I'd expect in a couple of years, the average is going to be about 6 liters per 100. So one thing that I do get asked about is using all the touch controls with uh, gloves. So I do have thin liner gloves with touchscreen compatible index and thumb. So obviously that's worked well, but even the base fabric still works. You just need to apply firmer pressure. Um, the steering switch themselves do have a winter glove mode that supposedly increases the sensitivity, but I I've, I've haven't had to use that. Um, I can imagine though if you have thick like cotton gloves, it's, it's just not going to work very well. But I don't think you need to use that either because the heated steering wheel works really well. In fact, the whole um, automated climate control concierge does a fantastic job of regulating not only the airflow, but also the steering wheel and the heated seats to your preset temperature. It even allows you to customize the behavior of the steering wheel and the heated seats separately um, from the airflow. So say for example, if 20 degree airflow feels just right, but you want your seats to be hotter or cooler, you can dial those settings in in the uh, infotainment. It even redirects the airflow on its own. So it does a fantastic job of keeping the, uh, the windows from fogging up. So climate is awesome. But aside from that, you also have wiper and side mirror de-icers and even a backup camera washer. So you never have a problem with visibility in this car. Actually, ironically, the only visibility issue comes from the wiper themselves not covering all the way to the left edge of the windshield. I had already noticed this in the summer. Um, in the rain, it's a minor annoyance, but in the snow, in heavy snow, it actually creates a pretty sizable blind spot along the uh, A pillar. It's kind of hard for me to believe that Lexus will miss something like this. Uh, not quite sure what happened there. Some other minor annoyances. Um, when you start the car on cold days, the engine wants to kick in right away to try and warm up as fast as possible, which is perfectly normal, but it can be a sharp contrast compared to how it quiet it normally runs. Like once the engine is fully warmed up and the hybrid system is in full operation, the car is very quiet. So on cold days, when you start up, it can be a bit of a shock. And also on cold and or wet days, the hydraulic brakes, as you engage and disengage them, they can feel a little grabby and can make kind of a slight groaning sound. Um, I think for the most part, that has something to do with the fact that in hybrid cars, you're mostly slowing down by region. You're not using your hydraulic brakes all that much unless you purposefully brake, purposefully brake hard. Uh, in fact, if I do that a couple of times, like just to engage the hydraulic brakes, um, the sound goes away on its own. And it also goes away um, when the w weather warms up a little bit. 
Um, one issue that I actually ran into is with the front passenger uh, handle, the door handle on the outside. So it's just a button. The handle itself doesn't actually move. And I'm guessing in this case, some moisture got through the seal and it got a little bit frozen. So it took noticeably more force to open um, this door. Um, again, went away on its own once the weather warmed up. Um, and looking on the Lexus forums, it doesn't seem like a common problem at all. So I, I probably just got unlucky. I'm hoping that the dealer can take care of it on my next visit. So yeah, overall my experience with the NX Hybrid in the winter has been a bit of a mixed bag. Um, on the one hand, this car completely crushes traditional winter issues. The climate system keeps you perfectly nice and cozy. The hybrid all-wheel drive is confident in the snow. Visibility, for the most part, is very good. Um, but on the other hand, there's a couple of new issues that I wasn't used to, like the A-pillar blind spot, the braking sound, and that door handle bugged me quite a bit, not gonna lie. Um, so it's just small th little issues that added up to kind of detract from the overall luxury feeling. So definitely something, a couple of things that Lexus can work on. Now, switching gears a bit, for all the little things that Lexus could have, should have worked on, one thing is for certain, and that is they spend way too much time on this hybrid drivetrain because this powertrain is just absolutely fantastic. Now, I got flack during my owner's review for not showing the power and torque figures, to which I always respond, it, it doesn't do this car justice. But I will show the power figures. Um, in fact, Lexus doesn't publish official torque figures for the uh, hybrid version. Um, but this powertrain is just so well-rounded. It is honestly such a perfect balance between responsiveness smoothness and just power and efficiency so responsiveness it's got that from the electric motors so at low to medium speeds especially when you're starting off the line this car is surprisingly peppy and it's such a joy to zip around town with this car and even at medium to the high speeds like say if you're on a regional highway that's one lane that's when passing power is critical and this has more than enough power for that and it delivers that power with exceptional smoothness with the ecvt so any pedal input that you have, it responds very linearly. It's very predictable. Nowadays, when I go back to uh, traditional automatic cars, I just can't help but feel every gear transition because of the limited amount of gears. It just, it just feels jerky to me. Um, if you've never experienced a hybrid drivetrain, the smoothness is unparalleled. It's, it's just amazing what uh, Toyota and Lexus has achieved with this drivetrain. As for drive modes, we have Eco, Normal, and Sport. Um, I started driving in eco mode and I kind of just left it there for the longest time. Um, and one day I put it into normal and I <laughs> all felt like I was driving a new car. So it honestly, unless you're 100% committed to the absolute best fuel economy, I would say just drive in normal. In eco mode, it's noticeably more sluggish. And realistically, I feel like normal mode doesn't actually lose that much fuel economy anyways. So. Um, and then in sport mode, it's very, very similar to normal. Um, the only difference you're really gonna see is if you're flooring it. It's just gonna be holding that throttle for a bit longer. As for brake pedal feel, again, in hybrids, you're mostly slowing down by region. You're not using a hydraulic brakes all that much, um, but they've done a very good job making it feel very similar to any traditional brakes. The only thing I would say is that, so there, this is brake by wire. There's no mechanical connection between your pedal and the actual brakes. So there's a sensor called the stroke simulator and it, it can be quite sensitive. So all it is, is you need to brake very gradually, very linearly. If you have any sort of jerky motion, uh, that might just trigger the transition between region and hydraulic brakes. So that's kind of when you're gonna feel a difference in that braking force. So just make sure that you're braking very linearly, very gradually in a hybrid car. Steering is interesting. I always thought that I prefer heavier steering. That's one of the things that I missed from my old Mazda 3. Um, the NX hybrid steering is definitely light, but it still has a pretty solid feeling to it. It's quick, it's direct, and I don't know. I feel like I've just grown to really like it. Now, another area that Lexus has put in a lot of solid effort is in all the tech features. So right off the bat, love the digital rear view mirror. It just offers so much more visibility. Can't ever imagine driving without one. Um, the infotainment itself works really well. It's got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, wireless. Uh, it's responsive, it's intuitive to use. A couple of minor complaints. So the boot up time can be quite long. Normally that's uh, not a problem, but if you're waiting for navigation instructions, then you're gonna be at the mercy of the boot up time. 
Um, second is no dedicated home button. So again, I'm in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay most of the time, but in the off chance that you need to go back to the Lexus interface, it just takes too many clicks in my opinion. Like there's more than enough screen real estate for them to put in a dedicated home button, I feel like. Um, and lastly, just some occasional connectivity issues. Like sometimes out of the blue, uh, the phones would refuse to connect and really the only way is to like disconnect the phones and then reconnect the Bluetooth. So I don't know why it happens, but it's thankfully it's not too often. When it does happen though, it's kind of annoying. One controversial feature is the steering wheel touch capacitive buttons. I think they come in the highest trim or whichever one that comes with the heads up display. I know some people think they're downright clunky to use and while I do agree that they're objectively a little bit slower to use, I think they're far from clunky and they're just safer and offer more functionality. So safer because the functions are projected in the heads up display so you never have to look down at your steering wheel and more functionality comes with the additional page of customizable buttons on either side of the steering wheel. I really like the fact that I can have climate or radio or even 360 camera controls right on the steering wheel. It's really handy. The heads up display itself worked just fine. There's different modes that you can cycle through to display varying levels of information. Although they really should have included a dedicated eco mode to show the uh, eco meter because it does exist. It's just normally buried underneath all the driver assist displays. So in order to show the eco meter, I need to turn off lane departure alert, um, adaptive cruise control and lane tracing assist. And now there's uh, eco meter will show and this is super handy for those of you hyper milers that like to drive hybrid cars like a mini game to maximize fuel economy kind of like the way I do um, so it's a good visual indicator to help you always stay in the eco zone as you accelerate and also never maxing out region as you brake couple of updates on the driver assist side. So I've turned lane departure alert back on, but I've turned off front cross traffic alert. So initially I turned off uh, lane departure alert because I just wasn't used to the fact that whenever I'm steering away from like a pothole, um, the car would attempt to steer me back. And now that I know to anticipate that, I've given another chance. And realistically, I think the system is tuned to be as non-intrusive as possible while still achieving the safety function. Um, the corrective steering is very gentle. If you were actually steering away intentionally, there's no way the system can overpower you. And if the system failed to keep you in the lane, it will give you a warning on the heads-up display and also vibrate the steering wheel gently in case you actually weren't paying attention. As for front cross traffic alert, I decided to turn it off. I don't necessarily think it's a bad feature per se, but it's more for like big dense city driving with a lot of blind intersections. I think that's what Lexus showed in their initial tech demo. Um, the roads where I drive most of the time is very open. So what ends up happening is the front cross traffic alert would go off like a couple of seconds after I've seen the car coming from a mile away. So I'm more or less desensitized to that warning now, which basically makes it pointless. I still very much like using proactive driving assist. So that's when the NX can apply gentle braking for you as you're coasting and as you're coming up to a vehicle in front of you. Um, so it's almost like a precursor to pre-collision warning from a safety perspective. But also what I like about it is that it almost allows me to do one pedal driving most of the time. I really only need to brake at the last second to bring the car to a complete stop at a traffic light. Um, so the sensitivity is adjustable, but again, the key point is only when you're coasting. So if you decide to speed up or you want to brake yourself, um, proactive driving assist cancels immediately, so it can never fight you. Again, as non-intrusive as possible while still achieving the safety function. And I know people don't like this, or a lot of people that I've talked to don't like it. So, I don't know, maybe driving habits is as subjective as looks, so I'm not, I'm not here to convince anybody. For those of you who have used some of these features in a Lexus or even a Toyota, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What are some reasons that you like or dislike these features? It's interesting to know. One thing I think most people can agree on though is the adaptive cruise control with lane tracing assist works extremely well, both on the highway and actually I use it on city roads a lot of the time as well. It does a fantastic job of keeping you centered in the lane and it even reduces speed slightly on its own when it detects a curve coming up. 
Um, it really takes the chore out of daily commutes, especially in stop and go traffic. Um, I haven't really had much issues with uh, detection and deceleration, except I think I've noticed that on somewhat steep inclines and declines, like in the city, so this is probably pushing the boundaries and limitations of the feature a little bit. Um, but in those scenarios, I feel like it doesn't detect and start braking when I usually expect it to. So just, just be aware of that when you're on like steep inclines and declines. But aside from driving and all the tech, I think this cabin is just fantastic to spend time in. And one of the primary reasons is the Mark Levinson speakers, which just sounds amazing. I honestly think they're well worth the upgrade. Um, I know some people have recommended to put the center point uh, one step to the front. To me, that sounds a little too overbearing. And then it just doesn't sound very good um, when you're back here. So I've actually preferred to put it the center point two steps to the back. Even in the front, I think that sounds the most well-balanced with the added benefit of it being a better experience for the rear passenger as well. Now, secondly, this interior is just really well done. Um, I love the panoramic roof. It adds a ton of light and just makes it feel open and airy. Um, I really like the Palomino interior. At some point in my life, I really want red seats, but for this one, I do not regret the decision at all. It looks fantastic in here. And the leather seats themselves are very comfortable. Uh, they're heated all around and ventilated in the front. And I like the ride height as well. It makes getting in the vehicle very easy. There's a good amount of space in the front and the back as well. Um, one complaint with the back is that there's a slope to the rear door and it kind of interferes with getting out the rear door. So you gotta crunch forward and clear your head before stepping out to avoid hitting your head. On the topic of ingress and egress, I honestly still like the way they've implemented the digital latch door handles. Yes, obviously minus the slightly frozen one, so hopefully they can figure out a way to make these a little more bulletproof. Um, but otherwise, I really do like the way they operate, um, especially on the inside, like pushing the, pushing the button with my thumb and then opening the door just feels a lot more natural than pulling a lever and then opening the door. Um, but overall, it's decently luxurious in here, and at night you have the ambient lighting as well. It's on the conservative side, but it's fine. Honestly, my biggest complaint with the interior is just the passenger side dash. It's just a little too plain and boring. All while being reasonably practical as well. Um, I still haven't been on a long road trip with this car yet, but my parents recently visited Canada and they always bring a lot of luggage. So I had to do a little bit of shuffling and these back seats do recline a little bit, but that means you lose a little bit of luggage space. So just be aware of that. But in the end, everything was able to fit just fine. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to road tripping with the NX Hybrid someday soon. And lastly, my dealer experience has been pretty good, but I know that's going to vary from region to region. They've already fixed the problem for me. Uh, my back right window was getting stuck um, halfway down. I think they said it was misaligned in its track. Um, so they were able to fix that pretty quickly on my first visit. So now I need to get them to take a look at the front door handle. That problem's gone away now because it's warmer, so I, I don't know if they'll be able to reproduce it. But also I think I have some uh, occasional minor creaking in the back panel here. It's not, it's not too severe, so I don't know if they'll be able to isolate it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So to sum things up and some closing thoughts on the NX Hybrid long-term review, yes, the honeymoon has ended. No, I do not have post-honeymoon blues, thankfully. I wanted to be critical because I honestly had very high expectations when I purchased this car. It's definitely not perfect. It's got some flaws that unfortunately I have to work around slash work with. Um, but ultimately I get reminded that it's a product. It's engineered, designed, and built to a price point. And even if that's the case, I still firmly believe that Lexus has spent their time and resources well because the NX Hybrid has gotten a lot of things right. And I think that's what contributes to its mass market appeal. That's why these things sell so well. That's why they're backlogged for so long, or at least they used to be. And for my driving style and my lifestyle, I still think this is the most sensible vehicle I could have purchased. So it's worth every penny to me and I have no regrets. I do look forward to what's in store for the next couple of years though, because a lot of manufacturers are jumping into the hybrid game, especially Genesis. So Lexus definitely has a lead, but I'm, I'm hoping the next generation of products is not a story of how other manufacturers have caught up to Lexus hybrids, uh, more of how they've like how Lexus has innovated and stayed on top, knocked it out of the park. So what do you guys think? After all of this, is this something that you would consider? Um, have you ever test driven the NX Hybrid? And what are some reasons that you liked or disliked it? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. Until next time. Shoo.